of building design one so for our topic for today is all about the suggested format for the bill of materials and summary cost estimates so first after determining the various materials needed for the construction project and computing the corresponding quantities required the data should be organized and presented like the sample bill of materials shown on the following pages so it 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 also includes the summary cost estimates for materials, labors, and other construction expenses. So first we need to determine is a unique feature of our bill of materials is the portrait format containing the drawings and specifications of the doors and windows for the project. This presentation is also adaptable for raw drawings are more handy when soliciting price quotations from the suppliers. They save on drafting work because the illustrations in the bill of materials needed to be drawn in the project working drawings anymore. So moreover, the file copies of designs also used in the other projects can be readily reproduced by photocopying or white printing for originals or tracing paper, thereby eliminating the need for redrafting as often as the need arises. So, what can you see in the first column in Bill of Materials? So, the first column of Bill of Materials should show the descriptions of the required articles. As much as possible, the brand names of manufactured products should also be included. So, they must be the same as those mentioned in the project specifications. So, next, so for the quantity, so what is quantity? The estimated number of pieces volumes and etc so quantity can be a uh, number or uh, volumes and area so the appropriate units of measure by, by which they are sold are shown under column unit then for the next column is the unit cost so for the unit cost refers to the sale price per indicated unit of measure of the commodity to be brought. Its total cost is the product of the quantity and the unit cost of the material required. Initially, these two columns may be left blank until one has obtained the prevailing prices of the desired construction materials. So it means it is the discretion of the engineer if he would put values in, in this column. So the current cost can be verified from the dealers. So, yeah. So then next, so to illustrate how the the bill of materials should be completed, answers which are we to assume as appropriate at the at the time this was prepared are entered in all the columns under the heading. So for foundation, so example we have the concrete columns. So under the concrete columns, we have the cement, the sand, the gravel, and the rebar. So as well as for the beams. So here is the example of a bill of materials. So as you can see, for the first column is the description of the material. For example, we have the foundation, concrete columns, beams, and concrete column hollow blocks. Then for the Portland cement, so we we have the Atlas brand wash, then so on and so forth, gravel, earth fill steel bars bar number for the ties and for the stirrups then concrete nails and so on and so forth then next so then next we have the second column which is the quantity so what can we see in the quantity so for the quantity um, so for the quantity so the quantity is the number so it may be 450, uh, 30, 45, it depends on the estimated value by the engineer or the quantity surveyor. Then next, for, so for the unit or for the third column is the unit. So unit for, uh, num for the cement, so it is in bags. Then for the sand, gravel, earth fill, it is in cubic meters or it is in volume. Then for the concrete hollow block, so it is in piece. Then for uh, the steel reinforcing bars, so it is in kilograms. Then for the wood, it is in board feet and so on and so forth. So it depends on the materials. Then for the unit cost, so the unit cost is the price prevailing based on time. 
or based on the value in the market and last is the total cost is it is simply uh, the quantity times the unit cost to get for the total cost of that specific material then next so next the last page of the bill of materials contains a suggested format for summarizing the overall expenses for a small construction project the total cost of the materials is the sum of all the computed amounts shown across the headings in bill of materials to give allowance for overlooked items so miscellaneous heading is included in and its estimated cost will depend upon the estimator's thoroughness and the degree of completeness of the materials listed so here is the last page of the bill of materials so for the last page of for the last page in bill of materials so as we can see so we have the summary cost estimates for materials labor and other construction expenses so it is divided into the different into different parts so part one is foundation then part two floor framing three roof framings four roofing materials plumbing plumbing fixtures electrical materials doors windows and accessories painting materials then next is the estimated cost of labor then est estimated expenses for contingencies and last is the contractor's profit and the contractor's uh, tax then next so the cost of the labor can be obtained from reputable labor contractors it may range it may range from 30 percent to 35 percent of the total project so it depends on the contractors contingencies are also included to take care of unexpected rise in the cost of labor and materials so payment for the various construction permits and for supervision fees are a part of the indirect expenses so they have noted that construction permits and supervision supervision fees are indirect expenses so tax also is an indirect expenses so if the construction is to be undertaken by a contractor the other cost would include the contractor's tax and profit overhead expenses and etc so that's all for the bill of the materials or for the suggested format format in the bill of materials so this one this uh format so this will be our guide in creating and making a summary of bill of materials so that's all thank you